Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, and today I'm here to talk about Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2 of Apple TV's Dark Matter. So, I had some mixed feelings going into Dark Matter. On one hand, Apple has been crushing the fuck out of sci-fi. Uh, there are several, uh, not good, but great sci-fi shows on Apple right now, and even the ones that don't quite land, like Constellation, for example, are still pretty solid, and I still consider those shows to be risks that were worth taking, both in making and in me watching. Um, solid cast and concept, too, uh, for, for Dark Matter. The trailer really pulled me in, even when there's a small part of me that feels like this is just another show in Apple's sci-fi assembly line, rather than something that they thought was special and, and worth making, but... Uh, I then looked into who was involved. The showrunner here is Blake Crouch. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of writing credits to his name, just two shows, Wayward Pines and Good Behavior, neither of which I've seen. Uh, but he's here because he's the author of the book that the show is based on. And generally, I'm like, oh, that's great. Like, that's, that's great. His vision from his book won't have to be compromised in any way unless he wants it to be. Like, that's great news. It's his baby in print form, and now it can be his baby in, in the visual medium. Great, right? But then I read the reviews of the book. <laughs> well, I, I didn't read the full reviews. I, I read like, you know, a couple of those like two or three sentence blurbs, you know, they were like this person for this uh, publication said this. So this person said that. And I'll just say they were mixed, but they, they generally lean toward the negative and they lean toward the negative in ways that go far beyond concerning for me as it pertains to making a TV show based on that on that IP. Uh, especially when considering now what I thought was a great thing, like, oh, the guy who wrote the book is making the show. Now I'm just like, oh shit, the guy who wrote the book is making the show. <laughs> Can I expect the same issues that, that the book critics had with the novel to be present on the show? So like, that's where I mentally was at coming into these first two episodes. And I, what did I think? Well, I, I definitely enjoyed the first two episodes. I don't have any major complaints and I'll probably keep watching. Well, I'm definitely going to keep watching it, at least for now. The problem is that, like, specifically, these first two episodes, they did little to sell me on the show outside of what I already saw in the trailers. Like, if you saw the trailer, nothing that takes place in the first two episodes, aside from the very last moment of the second episode, should come as a shock. Like, the... To put this in further, perspe <laughs> further perspective... The trailer that they play at the end of episode two that's like this season on Dark Matter. That shit did a better <laughs> better job of selling me on the show than the first two episodes did. And again, I'm not trying to shit on the first two episodes by any means. Like, they're not bad at, at all. Like I said, I enjoyed them. Uh, and if you haven't seen the trailer, you'll probably like them even more than I did. Problem is, if you haven't seen the trailer, then are you even watching the show? But uh, anyway, so... Hey everybody, I just want to take a small break from this review to talk about the various other ways you can engage with me on other platforms. If you're so inclined, uh, and I understand why you wouldn't, I am an acquired taste, but you can join the Patreon where you can get extra content like retro reviews where I review old shows and movies to see if they still hold up today, Mike's Musings where I talk about shows I'm watching that I don't cover on the channel, or Mike's VOD where you can commission me to watch a show which I will then review on the channel. And if you want to engage with me and chat with me more directly, I also implore you to join the Discord and follow the Facebook page. I set up channels in the Discord for all of us to discuss the shows I'm reviewing on the channel. And I also drop new videos in there since it's the easiest platform for me to share to from my phone. The Facebook can be really fun because I sort of live comment on shows I'm watching, often while under the influence, I'm not going to lie. And I'll also share news there, both about television and film and about myself as well. So if you like my content, you want to be more engaged, you think I'm charming, or you simply want to show support, feel free to sign up for the Patreon or join the Discord or Facebook today. Links to all platforms are in every video description. Remember to share all my shit to your respective social media platforms. And now back to this review. Uh, let's get into talking about what this show is about. Uh, well, it's a show that, uh, at least as of right now, uh, isn't really exploring uncharted territory. And again, if you saw the trailer, you already know what it's about. Uh, so... Uh, Joel Edgerton is the lead uh, male. He plays Jason, uh, a physics teacher who is married to uh, the female lead, Jennifer Connelly, and her character's named Daniela. And they have a 15-year-old son together. 
Uh, when Jace is kidnapped after a night at the bar, he wakes up in what appears to be the same world that he was in before he went to the bar, but there's a lot of differences. Uh, mainly that he's not married, he doesn't have a kid, and he's now a wealthy tech bro. <laughs> And the first episode spends its entire runtime kind of like establishing what happened. Like we see uh, Joel's life before he goes to the bar so we can have an idea of like, okay, these are his habits. These are his character traits. Uh, this is how his family and his peers look at him. You know, all of that shit. This is how, like you, They give us probably a good maybe like 25 minutes of like, just getting to see his life ahead of time. I mean, I'm sorry, before the bar incident. And then the, the rest of it is kind of like him like figuring like not figuring out because he didn't figure out shit but like uh just you know responding to like oh shit everything seems different now going on from there and the second episode is him noticing all of the differences uh in the world that he's currently in and then the people within that world noticing the differences in him so it's like it's very i don't it's it, it sounds rude to say very basic but it is it's it's a pretty like it's your stand it's nothing special uh, as far as like your sci-fi concepts go. Nothing bad or anything like that. Just nothing remarkable. Nothing that's like, oh shit, this is really new and fresh and creative. And I'm in like, I, like again, like with Foundation or something like that. Uh, but like I said, nothing remarkable that we didn't already glean from the trailer. On the plus side, that of course could indicate that these remaining seven episodes, it's a nine episode season, could be balls to the wall great and full of shit that I have no idea of that because the trailer only had the shit from the first two episodes. So, I mean, there's a lot that could happen here. And I, I'm totally in on that idea of the remaining seven episodes being completely, uh, I don't want to say surprising, but just kind of like, just, just something that feels fresh. Because like I said, I, I felt like in these first two episodes, I'm watching something I've seen a lot of times already. I even asked myself in my notes while I was watching episode one, I was like, is this going to be like Minority Report where he's like, being chased through the whole thing and he's also trying to solve a mystery at the same time and by the end of episode two yeah it does seem like it's, it does seem like that's what it's gonna be i thought okay he's gonna have to figure out where he is why he's there and get back to his family but instead of that being a two-hour movie it's gonna be a nine-hour show and i don't know where this show is gonna find the legs to give me nine hours of of, of valuable content but then i watched that uh the the trailer that i talked about the this season on dark matter trailer and there's an added wrinkle that intrigues me and, and, and to be clear just because i know the mystery that jason is going to try to solve already it doesn't change my interest in it i still want to know why and how he's in this different timeline but the added wrinkle that intrigues me it looks like jason is gonna like hit a bunch of different timelines in his quest to go home and find his family and is gonna run into like several different versions of the people that we've already seen so it's not like it's gonna stay in these two timelines where it's like jason's in, you know just the one he came from and the one he's in now no he's gonna hit a whole bunch of different timelines and he's gonna have meet different versions of his wife different versions of other characters presumably as well and that the idea of him hitting the multiple timelines that's intriguing to me like how is he gonna know which timeline was his original one that he left from when there's presumably an infinite number of them is he uh is him hitting different timelines going to be kind of like a, a stupid and pointless trial and error like let me try this one or is there going to be some sort of rhyme and reason to it they introduce this box in this episode in the, in the second episode that is essentially the vehicle that is used to go in between timelines is the box going to be are we going to come to understand how the box works exactly as far as like again with the rhyme or reason to to, to moving across timelines um how and why was what i'm going to call for the future og jason what why was he how and why was he selected to be replaced in his timeline there are a lot of interesting questions that trailer raised to me that actually are relatively unexplored ideas that i'm excited to see so and again i'm not saying we've never seen anything like that before but i said that's something i'm like okay let me see how this plays out and also that's interesting when we're talking about the caliber of actor involved here too we're talking about edgerton who's always great jennifer Connolly, uh always great uh we've seen a lot of actors play multiple characters in a show or a film but this one is really going to test them, Edgerton and Connolly, because, and, and, and anyone else too, because they have to play several versions of the same character and, and, and slightly different versions of that and not entirely new or different people. And you can see Edgerton doing this in the first, uh, in these first two episodes. He plays two different Jasons and while seemingly identical, they do have slightly different quirks and characteristics. And I don't know what's more difficult 
uh, playing two entirely different characters or playing several slightly different versions of the same character, but I'd imagine it's the latter, and that would give Edgerton, Connolly, and this entire cast uh, a real opportunity to really uh, strut their stuff. So, uh, having said that, my plan right now is to continue covering this show. Like I said, I'm definitely going to keep watching it. Uh, I did enjoy these first two episodes, and there's a great deal of potential in these remaining seven, but if I'm being honest... I'm only cautiously optimistic at this point. I'm, I'm fully willing to bail on this shit. Like, if I watch the third episode, I'm like, this isn't going anywhere interesting. I fully reserve the right to bail. So we'll see. I can end up changing my mind like I did with Constellation. But if I do, I'll let you guys know, like I did with Constellation, on the Facebook page or on, on, on the Discord. So uh, if you watch these first two, let me know what you thought in the comments. And until next Wednesday, peace.